Neil. I will uh, replay the comments from the IRC. If you have any comments, you can shout and you can scream and he can repeat the scream. Or if you can wait for the mic, uh, he can run. So if you're going to say something more than a scream, please wait for, for the mic. Uh, so there we are. Thank you very much. Um, it's good to see so many people here. Normally, I complain about um, the, the first every single one for the last three or four um, dev comps. This has always been after the cheese and wine party in the morning. So we have about five people sat around looking very hungover. And then I'm one of those people who has to get up on stage and give a talk about, about the release process. Um, now this time it was slightly different. It was not after the cheese and wine party, but also on the first day of DebComp. So writing these slides happened a few hours ago. So you'll have to bear with me if there's any, any spelling mistakes. Um, my name's Neil McGovern. I've been involved with Debian for the last 12 or so years in one form or another, everywhere from policy writing, um, from the web apps policy to the security team, and lately in my incarnation as one of the two release managers. Um, we also have here Adam Barrett, who's at the front, and he's going to give a little wave, and Phil Kern, who's in the green t-shirt halfway through. So if you have any, any questions as well, then they'll feel free to ask us these two people as well. Um, now, a, a quick overview of why I'm up here and, and Adam's not. Um, um, apart from he, 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 he sort of twisted my arm behind my back until I did it, um, is we sort of decided that we were going to split the release management into two, a technical side, so dealing with transitions and bugs and making sure that happens, and then a management-y type side of sort of communicating with the project and talking to people. Um, so so that, that is, um, for my sins, my, my job. Um, so, so a quick outline of what we're, what, what we're here to talk about. Um, we've had a, a brief team change. We've had another person come into the team, which is fantastic. Um, a, a quick talk about the new things that are happening in Wheezy. Um, a little bit about the freeze and, and how it went and, and the sort of issues we saw around time-based freezes, which is a, a thing for people who don't know of a, a new thing we're trying this year on, on how we manage freeze policies. And, and then how um, you can get um, your package unblocked, what our current thing that means we're frozen actually means. Uh, and then a, a little bit of information about when we expect to release uh, and, and that sort of um, area, and, and then some details on, on how to contact us. Um, so firstly, um, IRC Nick Kibbe, um, Cyril, has joined us as release assistant and is doing a fantastic job. Um, I'm sure if you've mailed the list with unblock requests or, or with transitions, then, you, then you've come across him already. Um, but of course, we always need more people, uh, more people to come and volunteer and help in the release team. Um, it's uh, traditionally been a fairly small team, anywhere between two to about six-ish or so. Um, so more people helping in this, uh, what can be a very manual, quite intensive task, um, is, is certainly very, very useful. And um, certainly see any of us at the end if, if you're interested in helping out with that. So Wheezy, we have now frozen, which means we're not having automatic uh, migration of packages going into testing which is starting to give us an idea of the sort of new things we're going to see in Wheezy. Um, so we've got KD 4.8, uh, GNOME 3.4, uh, new versions of Python, and a 3.2 Linux kernel. So this is quite up-to-date stuff um, that, that we're pushing out and hopefully will be in, 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 the, um, in the next release, which I hope will be fairly soon. But one of the main points here is that we don't actually know what's going to be there because there's, I think, at the last count, 39,000 binary packages or so in a Debian release. So we don't know what we can tell everyone and, and tell the world about what's in our latest release. As you know, I think today um, we're going to be having the new desktop base artwork go in, which will be quite nice, so we'll have a new look for that. And um, with my um, press team hat on, um, I've already had requests from um, journalists saying, what's going to be in the new release? Can you give us screenshots? Can, can you show us the really cool things? And so we got, once again, going to be using this wiki page at the bottom, which is wiki.debian.org slash new in Wheezy. And I'd encourage everyone if, if, to go and put in really interesting stuff there, things that are going to be new in Wheezy and, and really quite exciting for the users to, to really help show what's going to be in the new release and, and make everyone really excited about it, then that'd be great. 
that's also the place that the press team are going to be basing release announcements off, so what we've got coming up. So that's the, really the place to, to put it all. Um, so I, I mentioned the freeze. Um, we Last um, time at DebConf, we had a... a a few, we've, we've had a few different interesting announcements around freezing and, and when we do it. This, this started in DebConf 9 when we said we're going to follow Ubuntu and everyone said, ah, no, don't do that. And then we had a issue in DebConf 10 where we said we're fro and despite mails to DDA saying we're freezing really soon now, um, we said we're frozen um, during the release team talk um, and that didn't go down very well, obviously, either. Um, so we, we decided to use a, a time-based freeze. So we say in advance when we're going to freeze. And, and there's a few advantages and disadvantages to that. Um, and it, it's something we decided to do new. We announced this um, about, well, we announced it um, in June last year. So, so we've known for a while that the freeze is happening. And we decided um, this date in a sprint. There's been some discussion about why did we pick June and, and why not different dates. And, and to be honest, there is no good answer. Um, if you pick up any single month or any single date, it will always be inconvenient for someone. We pick the best one we can and, and when we think would be sort of good in the, in the sort of cycle to try, try and get things together. And, and this is really to help give maintainers a date and a framework that they know they can, can release with. Um, so they should know far in advance of when we're going to freeze, and so should have everything ready, done in plenty of time um, to make sure that that, that happens. Um, how's it going so far? Well, um, most of the large transitions which we asked for were done. Uh, there were still some which weren't, um, partially due to time pressures, um, making sure that we have essentially enough people in the release team to handle each of these transitions. Uh, a transition happens when somebody uploads a new set of packages with an API break or an ABI break and essentially you have to rebuild everything that depends on it. And one of the issues is that all of those packages have to go into testing together to make sure it, it all remains compatible. And that often requires a bit of hand-holding and, and just making sure that you sort of make sure it's in the right place to, to all go in together and, and, and you have to handle that. And that just requires a manpower of someone to look after it and make sure it works. Um, so we have had to, unfortunately, postpone some transitions. Um, there's been a, th th there's a few. I think um, libpng was the, the biggest one that, that we just weren't able to get in in time due to, obviously, this, the size of that. Um, but um, obviously, we tried to do as much as we can. And, we st and one of the main issues we saw is we still had a lot of last minute uploads and things done really at the last minute as in major changes um, a few days before we freeze or, or, or various other issues around that because people said, oh, well, we haven't had time to do it, um, it because they forgot about it or, or something. Um, another issue there is we've had a couple of very large um, transition changes very shortly before the release, um, and, and that caused um, a quite a few issues. As you can not very well see on the graph, um, the green line essentially is the number of RC bugs which the release team are interested in, um, which happen each release. Um, we were going down at a rate of knots, and that was excellent and all wonderful. And then there was a couple of, of breakages that, that happened, um, and that sent us right back up, and it's now got back to about the same level there. Um, so I, I, I'm not in, we're not entirely sure, and we're not going to think about until after we've done with the release on, on how we manage that sort of transition-based policy because things can break quite horribly um, just before a release. Um, I'm actually privately hopeful that um, we, that it is, uh, hopefully we'll just get better each time as maintainers get used to s when we say, okay, we're freezing in, uh, say, June 2014, then we will freeze in June 2014. And hopefully um, that will start to become a lot more accepted and people will start to realize that when we say we're going to freeze them, we actually are. So doing major changes the, the month before um, are just something that you really should try and avoid because it's going to delay everyone. And, and one of the aims of the time-based um, freezes was to try and ensure we have a, a, a short release. 
And that, that's really down to the number of release critical bugs. Um, so at the moment, we have a load of stats. These are um, Tolimar's um, stats, which he produces every week, which are fantastic. Uh, the main number at the bottom there is the 603. That is, I think, higher than we've ever frozen with before, and not somewhere where we would normally freeze, which is what, one of the reasons that it's come so late in what we said originally it would be in June 2012. We froze on the 30th of June 2012 in the hope to just try and bring that bug count down as much as possible, because that is still very, very high for a freeze. And we essentially just need to try and get that down to, to actually be able to release. Um, there's a lot of talk about how perhaps um, being freezing harms unstable or various other bits and pieces. And, and the answer to that is, is simply the sooner we get the freeze out, then the sooner, ever, sorry, the sooner we get the release out, the sooner the archive can be unfrozen. And um, as, as part of that, we've got the, um, um, our, our freeze policy, which is when we're going to uh, unblock pol um, packages to, to get into the release. Um, we're going to try, again, a gradual freeze, because we thought this went um, very well last time. Um, so the sort of things we're having at the moment, the, ex the accepted things into the release, will be RC bug fixes, fixes for release goals, um, which we've set up a while ago. Um, there is going to be a potentially new sort of release goal, which is going to be rebuilding a number of packages with um, XZ and um, compression to try and get things to fit on the first CD anymore um, at the moment, because otherwise we're going to have a problem essentially getting GNOME onto one CD. So there might be a, f a few NMUs around that, but that, that's sort of a, a side issue. Um, and then trans um, important bugs um, for optional extra packages, and those need to go through unstable. Um, we do this to make sure that there's the maximum amount of testing available and that everyone um, really gets some exposure to that, and, and you get that, that handling going through unstable into testing in, in the way the Debian QA process really works well. And then finally, translation and, and documentation updates. These are normally very low impact. I should point out that as the freeze goes on, um, the sort of bottom line will go up on this. So um, we will start to get to the stage where we are eventually, where we only have RC bug fixes only, and that's highly targeted RC bug fixes uh, that are being allowed in as we get closer and closer to that release date. So when do we release? Um, these will have increasing numbers of complexity depending on how much time you spend in hash Debian. Um, so it's real soon now. Um, certainly compared to, to, to what we've done um, before. Sooner if you help, um, which I'll get onto in a second, and one which I made up, which is when the release critical bug count reaches zero, which is the actual point in which we release, and that's the important um, one to bear in mind. So how can you help? Um, don't introduce new transitions. They, they break things horribly in many, many ways. Earlier I mentioned things have to go through unstable. Um, if it's involved in transition, it can't. Um, this means the package is not going to get tested as well. And as a consequence, we have to do things like uh, do a really thorough review on it. And this just takes up, amount, this takes up time. And the amount of time it takes up simply means we can't process as many unblock requests and the freeze takes longer. So doing these things which you say don't do means that um, if you do, the freeze is just going to take longer because we don't have enough people to, to do all the reviewing that we want. Um, try not to upload things into Unstable that you don't want released in Wheezy uh, because for a similar reason, this is what we're, we're going to be basing um, the next release off and then trying to migrate things through into testing. Um, mate, when fixing... Um, RC bugs, please everyone keep doing that. That's actually the key thing which everyone should do. Um, find an RC bug. There's, there's 603 at last count, um, certainly out there. There's plenty around to do. That, that's not a problem. I think if everyone at DevConf fix two RC bugs tomorrow, then, then we can release that by the end of DevConf, which would be great. Um, but it, it's, it's trying to get these, these sort of things. We really need to get those down because that's the major issue. That is going to hold us back. Um, testing is also very important. We're starting to get to a stage where we need to test migration um, and upgrade and installabilities and, and things like that to try and get, make sure that the user experience is great from when they're trying to go from one release to the next. And, and tell us about any problems that, that you do have. Um, 
And finally, I'll mention this, this link at the bottom, which is currently a debugs page with nothing tagged. But over the next few weeks or so, that will start to fill up um, with a number of user tags. These are um, Wheezy blocker tags, which are bugs that will need to be fixed um, before we can release. There's ignore tags, which we're um, going to essentially ignore for this release because they're minor, or we, we, or we don't think that they're actually um, either release critical or, or for this release, or it's something that we're just not going to, to block over. And there's um, will remove tags. Now, these are for packages that we're just going to remove from the release, um, which means that if people don't fix those packages, they're not going to be in the release. Um, similar to last year, we've, uh, and this year, we, we're trying to be fairly um, straightforward with our removal, so we're not going to delay um, removing packages for months and months, like has been happened a number of years in the past. Um, things will get removed uh, because, uh, especially if they've had uh, release critical bugs that have just been ignored for, for, a long, for a long amount of time. They leave packages if they're not very popular. Even if they're important for one particular user developer, then those really need to get those RC bugs fixed. And hopefully we'll be, and we'll, we'll be using those tags to, to try and in increase the sort of visibility of what we're doing there. Um, so quick methods of, of contacting us um, on how to get your package released. Uh, there's the mailing list, which is Debian release. Uh, List.d.o. Um, IRC is hash Debian release. Um, and these are great methods of contacting us. Certainly, really pop along and see us and talk to us about um, anything you want. Um, but the key thing is, they may not get your packages um, unblocked. If you write a de mail to Debian release, certainly at the moment, it's inc as you can imagine, it's incredibly busy um, because we have lots of people asking for unblocks and things like that. And there is a fairly high chance, well, certainly if it's me, that I'll just miss your mail. And then you'll essentially be ignored for a while as, as no one will pick it up. So the best thing to do is um, use report bug against release.debian.org. And that can handle things like your binary NMUs, your transitions, your unblocks, your proposed updates, anything like that. And that's in a single place where we can track it and, and, and make sure things happen and, and, and they get, get through. Um, otherwise, they quite frankly, won't. Um, just, and just finally, uh, a quick thanks to Calabra, who are my employers and paid me to come here. So that's, that, that's um, a big thank you for them. Um, and that is, as I explained, probably the, 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 all the slides that, that I had for the release, because I normally like to leave a fair amount for questions for the release talk. This time, I haven't actually um, announced that we're freezing now or that we've released or anything. So there might be a few fewer questions than I normally get and, and a little bit less heckling. Um, but I thought, I thought I'd uh, leave it there and, and see if anyone has any particular questions, either on the release or stuff we're looking to do in the future or anything at all, really. So I'll, I'll certainly open up the floor to, to any questions that people have. Sorry, what was that? The name of Wheezy Plus One. Ah, well, so, uh, so we, we're trying to, me and Adam, we're, we're having this debate about when we, when we should do this and, and, and have a talk. We, we haven't decided yet, um, is the basic answer. Um, we're, think, we're thinking of um, announcing it maybe in about a month's time or so. We, we normally do it, last time we did it about a month after the freeze. Um, but th there's been some ideas. Um, kicking around. There's been heavy lobbying from the Zerg and the Shark lobbies have been coming to see us and saying, please, please call the next release Zerg, who was the, some alien or something, the, is the big alien guy. And, and Shark is just um, the key ring maintainer's uh, preferential choice. Um, I have been threatened with having my key removed from the archive if we don't pick Shark, but he did that last year, last time as well, so uh, it's probably not going to happen. Or maybe he has and I haven't noticed. Hey, you, you don't know. Um, yeah, apparently that's, that's what I get for being management, was, was the comment there. Um, anyone else? Yes. What about the claw? The claw. That was also another suggestion from Joe somewhere. Um, although that might make some quite good artwork for T-shirts. Um, I'm not sure about that one either. I, I've, I've, what, what normally happens when we, we pick a release name is we try and think up something that hasn't been used, something that's quite iconic. Uh, would essentially look good on a t-shirt. And then we come up with this great name, and we 
mention it to the rest of the release team and FTP masters, and they say, that's horrible, you're not using that. And then we go, ah, right, okay, fine, so we need to come up with something else. And, and so then eventually we find something that people seem to like and, and works quite well. Um, any more? So, so I have a question not actually related to the name of the next release. Um, we, we have a history of burning out release team. Yes. Um, given that Zach talked yesterday about institutional memory and learning to do things, and, and given that we're trying time-based releases for the first time, do you think that a substantial portion of the current release team will still be present in two years' time for the next time-based freeze? Do I... Do I think there'll still be a substantial portion present in... Do you think we'll have enough of the current team present in two years' time that the, the lessons we have learned from our first time base freeze will still be held within the release team? People will still know what went wrong this time, what worked well, and what we need to do better for next time. I'm not asking any of you to commit to being here, but do you have a feel for how burnt out the team feels compared to previous years or previous release team um, and how that's likely to work in the future? I think it's been helpful to have a time-based freeze so that when these things do go wrong and when people, um, when there is things that are big changes uploaded at the last minute, uh, we can point at people and say, look, we've told you for many a year um, that this is happening. Now, it does raise a level of frustration that this is still happening. Um, in terms of ensuring that the, the memory continues to the next time, um, one of the things we did after the last release is we had a sprint with a retrospective and documented it all and put it all online to make sure that there's something that even new people can come and look at. And um, there's a lot of documentation going on um, from NILS to make sure that, that this sort of stuff is documented. Um, so I'm hopeful that even if that does happen, I don't have any particular reason, w uh, reason why it should at the moment, um, especially if we try and get more people involved, um, because part of the reason that people have been burnt out in the release team is that there has just not been enough people involved. So it's, it's fallen, all the work has fallen on the weight of a very few number of people and, and, and that's been the main issue there. Um, so I think if it does then um, hopefully we've got something in place to try and make sure that the ideas and what's gone right and what's gone wrong will carry on. From ARC, oh, Chris uh, Candelin asks, how does one see the tax on the packages being discussed. Sorry? Uh, you can read yeah. yourself. <laughs> Where? How does one see the tags on the packages um, being discussed? Yes, yeah, so this is only for release critical um, bugs. If you go to the um, deb.li slash wheezybugs, um, then the, the whole list of bugs will eventually be on there, and, and we'll go through and, and tag them all, and, and they'll be... Um, They'll, they'll be documented in, in there on, on to what's happening. Um, there's also a, a few other tools you can run on your personal desktop. Um, RC Alert is one of them, which will tell you about release critical bugs and packages installed on your machine. So hopefully, if it's installed on your machine, you might care about that package. So you should probably have a look at those RC bugs and hopefully go and fix them. So the real answer to Jonathan's question there is, in fact, that the entire release team will still be around. They'll just all be wearing wizard hats. Um, but I do have an actual question. Um, so one thing I've noticed in terms of how we deal with fixing of release critical bugs, I remember TBM four, five, six years ago had, was very good at organizing uh, bug squashing parties that had a, a distinct um, online component to them. Um, and I kind of get the impression that we aren't doing that so well anymore where there are a lot of people organizing bug squashing parties for Wheezy um, in one locale or another, but those seem to be taking place only in meat space and there's no hash Debian dash bugs doesn't really get used for coordination. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on if that's a problem that, that's hurting our rate of, of fixing RC bugs and if so, what we can do about it. Well, one of the main um, suggestions that I'm sure you know is, is that we all just go and create a Google Hangout or something like that and, and go sit on there and fix RC bugs, which I'm not sure is the, the right solution. But I do think it is quite important to try and get more people involved in RC bugs um, squashing. And if we can try and get more people to come along to the, um, even virtually to a real life um, bug squashing party, then this would be a really, really good thing. Um, Probably one of the reasons that this hasn't happened, again, is um, 
the amount of effort it takes to organize an RC, um, um, a, a RC bug squishing party. Um, certainly, it's, when you're actually thinking about, oh, I need to make sure there's venue place of somewhere to people to stay and the rest of it, then you don't necessarily think of, oh, and now I need to sort out making sure that there's like an online presence for people to come as well. Um, it'd be really good to happen as to the answer on how we make that happen without using um, proprietary or closed um, solutions or things that people aren't comfortable with. I'm not sure at the moment. Hi. Uh, for translation work, what, what's the policy during the freeze? How, how much time uh, we have than the release team accept uh, new translations? Um, about that long. <laughs> It may not be to scale, but about that long. Um, so so, so the, the, there's, a few, there's a few time scales in here. Um, one is um, how quickly is it um, going to take us to respond to these bugs and things like that, um, which is as soon as we can. Um, faster if more people come along and, and, and try and help out things. Certainly doing some basic triage, from, which anyone can do. Um, to try and get an idea of, of what's going to be in these particular bugs is very helpful for bringing down the, the amount of time. And again, these are all helpful for actually getting the release out quicker as well. Um, so I suppose the sort of answer is, which is a bit of a get out uh, answer, is, is as quick as we can. So I've got this brand new uh, package that's just about to go into new. Can I have a freeze exception, please? Well, it depends which, um, it, it depends which package it is. If, if, it's, if it's your special Debian CD package, then, then possibly, or the new key ring archive. But generally, um, no. <laughs> um, we, we've, uh, we've had a few people who, who said, oh, we've got a new package, can it just go in? I've just missed the freeze. And to be honest, we, we, we announced the freeze over a year ago. Um, we've been quite clear that this is when we're freezing and people need to make sure stuff is ready in time. Um, and if it's not, then I'm sorry, that then there's next time. And hopefully part of this will be able to make things more predictable, more reliable, so people won't be worried about when the next release is going to be. Um, and again, it's, it's our job um, as a release team to try and help the project um, release efficiently as a whole release, not just particular packages. Hey, Neil. Hi. I've been sitting here trying to process your allusion to Google plus Hangouts and so forth. And I, I realize this is a completely radical idea, and it's liable to upset all sorts of people in Debian. But why don't we use hash Debian dash devel on the IRC for something that's actually useful and have that be the place we all hang out when we're doing bug squashing parties? Yeah. Um, I have no particular problems with with using any channels and trying to get more people involved in squishing bugs. Um, releasing is a thing that the project needs to do as a whole. Um, we're in the release team ahead to help it and to try and massage it along and, and try and happen. But if, if developers as a whole don't want to release Debian or aren't interested, then it's just not going to happen. Um, there's not enough hours in the day or people in the release team to get those 600 odd RC bugs um, fixed or, well, without just removing half the archive and that would probably be, not be the, the most user-friendly option um, that we have there. Um, getting more people squishing these, is, it means we release faster, the freeze is shorter, and then we can move on to doing really exciting things again. It's essentially in, everyone, in everyone's hand to try and help this along. No more questions? I think that's it. No, Are we'll you sure? <laughs> I, I always get a little worried when we've got a release assistant sort of putting their, their hands up saying, yes, I'll ask something. I don't actually want to ask something. I okay. just wanted to point at another slot today at 4 p.m. Yes. Where I will put up um, a little description about the tools we use if you want to get involved. If you want to know what goes on behind the scenes, because this is more about the big picture, not what we are actually doing. So if you're interested, it should be rather buff-like. So if you want to ask questions there, feel free. If you just that you know that it's happening today at 4 PM. Yep. So yeah, that's today at 4, um, a buff on how we release things um, and the tools involved and how to get involved and do things. Um, it'd be 
great to see certainly this many people here and everyone here volunteering again to, to come and help and, and be on the release team and to, to squish all the RC bugs because that would be brilliant. I think that's hopefully it then. Okay. So that have you on. Thank you. Okay. Let's um, thank you. Nice job.